In April of 2005, after 25 years research of pyramids all around the planet, after my PhD in Mayan pyramids, I came to little Bosnian town of Visoko, just 30 minutes drive from the capital city of Sarajevo. I came to visit the local museum, and then I saw this. They called it Natural Hill. But then I'm looking in front of me, one side, to the left, another one, to the right, another one, in the back, the fourth side. So we have four sides. We can see triangular faces. We can see the corners. We can see the same slope from bottom to the top, and those four sides meet at apex, at the top. Geometrically speaking, this was a pyramid. I took a compass, and compass showed me that this side was perfectly oriented to the north. The one in the back, south, east, west. Mother Nature does not make hills with four triangular faces and perfect orientation, but intelligent hands. And this is when I started this Bosnian pyramid project. Despite all the obstacles, it has become the most active archaeological site in the world. And along the way, we have defined the set of scientific criteria that have to be fulfilled to call something a pyramid. Number one is geometry. You have to have geometry of pyramids. In most cases, they are four-sided pyramids. So from the air, the pyramid looks like this. You can see the town of Isoko, two major rivers, and now we can see two sides of the pyramid. You can see the corners between west and north, between north and east. You can see the access plateau to the top of the pyramid. Northeast corner, 2006, we removed one meter of soil. And what we are finding, perfect corner. The second element is the artificial construction material. So you have the geometry of the pyramid, but then you have construction material they used to build it. In the case of Peru, as we could see, they used adobe bricks. In Guatemala, volcanic stones. In Mexico, sandstone and granite. In Egypt, limestone and granite. And in Bosnia, the places where we were digging, we are finding construction material. One meter below the layer of soil, we are finding rectangular blocks. We took samples of these material, analyzed them, at the Institutes for Scientific and Construction Materials, they told us it was a concrete, artificially made concrete. You can measure the quality of the concrete. Two elements determine it. The first one, hardness. Harder the concrete, the better the quality. Our concrete in 21st century are in the range from 10 megapascals to 60 megapascals. 60, they made in Germany in the US, the best quality. Here, the hardness is from 73 to 134, better quality than what we can make today. The second element, water absorption. If water can get inside the concrete during the winter times, it freezes, and then concrete breaks. So the idea is to keep this absorption very low. Our norms in 21st century, up to 3%. Here, Bosnian Prima the Sun concrete, only 1%. Superior. So far, we have uncovered 
thousands of tons of the best quality and the oldest concrete on the planet. So, if we are to uncover the whole pyramid and replace the green color with the concrete, it could look like this. Element number three, orientation of the sides. All Chinese pyramids are oriented to the cosmic north. All old Egyptian pyramids, north. Most of the Peruvian, all Cahokia, north. The best orientation so far was the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Zero degrees and two minutes error from perfect north. In Bosnia, zero degrees, zero minutes and 12 seconds, the most precise orientation on the planet. Element number four, inner chambers, passageways. In Bosnian pyramids, we have seven level of passageways. Element number five, underground tunnels. Under Egyptian pyramids, two levels of tunnels. Under Chinese, Peruvian, Mexican tunnels. But in Bosnia, the most extensive underground tunnel network. Element number six, water. Egypt, River Nile. China, Mexico, Peru, the same thing. In Bosnia, we have two major rivers. They meet in the valley and then continue to the north. Element number seven, sacred geometry. I mentioned number pi, 3.14. That's the element of sacred geometry. Mentioned number phi, 1.618. Sacred geometry. When you have elements of sacred geometry, you have the movement of the energy. But also geometrical shapes, like equilateral triangle, is the part of sacred geometry. When we connect the tops of the pyramid of the sun with the top of the moon pyramid, top of the dragon pyramid, we are getting perfect equilateral triangle. 2,200 meters, 2,200, 2,200. Somebody was observing the valley from above, laying out those structures in a very precise way. You have sacred geometry, you have movement of the energy in the valley. In Egypt, number pi, number phi. In Bosnia, in order to calculate the diagonal and the length of the side, we need to apply square root of number three and square root of number two, 1.42, 1.73, these are irrational numbers. They never end. For example, number pi, 3.14, is actually 3.14159265358888. Never ends. Billions of digits. For ancients, those irrational numbers were alive. So when they assign them to the pyramids, the message is, the pyramid is alive. So we have first equilateral triangle. The sun pyramid, the moon, dragon. But inside there is another one. The top of the love pyramid, temple of mother earth, entrance to the tunnel. Triangle within a triangle. Sacred geometry, movement of the energy. And then if we extend those lines, the natural landmark, like the place where two rivers meet. One point, again, the river here, another equilateral triangle. That one we can use, together with the center of all these triangles, to form flower of life. The next element, astronomical features. Yes. When we look the sun on horizon and the sun pyramid, we can see the shadow of the sun pyramid in a form of triangle. The sun moves on horizon, the shadow moves, and then at the sunset, during the summer month, the shadow of the sun pyramid covers the moon pyramid in a symbolical way. The message is the rule of the day and the sun is over, and the rule of the night 
and the moon starts. That's why I name them the Bosnian pyramids of the sun and the moon. Very clear, clear astronomical relationship. And the only one in the world, hundreds of the sun and the moon pyramids in Central and South America, but never such an obvious astronomical connection like in Bosnia. Element number nine, energy potent places. The location of the pyramid was always very important. In Bosnia, below the pyramid, we have iron. Iron generates electromagnetic field. What the pyramid does, sucks this iron, amplifying it. We have underground water. Water moves, releases negative ions. The pyramid amplifies. We have two underground waters at different depths, parallel. In between, electrical field is generated. We have natural magnetism. The pyramid amplifies all those forms of energy. And those that are very hard to measure, like organ, life, chi energy. So now we realize that the pyramid is energy amplifier. Another element, we are the first one introducing this to the world, are so-called volcanic lines. What is below the core, below the soil is very important. We know almost nothing about it, especially about volcanoes, lava, minerals, irons. If we connect two volcano, we get volcanic line. If we extend this line, and if at the end you have pyramid, it means the pyramid lies on volcanic line. Some places in the world are very energetically potent because of the volcanic lines. For example, Angkor Wat in Cambodia has 15 volcanic lines coming to this location. Imagine how much energy underground is coming to this place. Cholula, this is the largest pyramid in Mexico. 18 volcanic lines. Gunung Padang, Western Java, 17 volcanic lines. Machu Picchu in Peru, famous spiritual site. 16 volcanic lines. Nazca Plateau with the Nazca lines. Seven volcanic lines. And at the bottom, Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 26 volcanic lines. Extremely energetically powerful. So, if we fulfill those 10 scientific elements, what is the result? The result is energy phenomena that pyramid generates. So it is not only the structure, but it is an energy machine. How do you measure this energy? Instead of empty words, we need to find a way to quantify, to measure using our scientific instruments. One of the ways is to use so-called PIP camera developed by British scientist Dr. Harry Oldfield. Through this camera, we can see energy fields. He calls them bioenergy fields, which are not visible to the naked human eye. Now, this is one pointy hill in Bosnia. And those energy fields are all horizontal. This is one village in Western Serbia. You see how those fields are all horizontal, green and blue and green and blue and red. And this is mountain Avala in Serbia, horizontal fields. And this is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun with the vertical fields. This is from 2015, completely different. This is from 2007. Vertical fields. Something is happening here. Let's take a look 3D through the eyes of the camera. So at the bottom, the town of Isoko, the pyramid of the sun, and look at the inside, the red, red color. Red color is the energy. You will see how the energy is getting accumulated 
Now it's all red, filled with the energy. And this energy is going through the top of the pyramid, hitting those horizontal fields. They are becoming vertical, so there are no obstacles between the energy flow and those fields. For the last eight years, we've been filming the pyramid. Those fields are also always vertical. It means that the pyramid is active at all times and there is a constant energy flow. To the right is the town of Isoko. To the left is the pyramid of the sun. Above the town, horizontal fields. Above the pyramid, vertical fields. Because we came to the machine. The second pyramid, the moon pyramid, vertical fields, 2011-2015. The dragon pyramid, vertical fields. The love pyramid, vertical fields. Temple of Mother Earth, vertical fields. So all the pyramids have been active. 